I did not bring my tripod and now I wish I did, but oh well, I'll work with it. So hi guys. Um, I've wanted to talk about this video for a while and I've just been struggling to find time to do any YouTube videos at this moment and I think that will be changing really fast, but I'm over all by myself, have time to myself, I'm chilling at the Mississippi River. Um, and I just wanted to talk about this vision I had where I saw the throne of God and it was, a, it was about a seven second long vision. And the actual vision of seeing the throne of God probably, at least as far as I remember, only lasted about three seconds. I know that God gave this to me to equip me and to show me how he deeply loves me and that was the whole point of this. And I want to get deeper into that so I'm just going to share this vision first and then talk about the actual point behind all of this. Um, I did share a YouTube video about this like two or three years ago when I had the vision but I didn't make a good video and I just whatever and so yeah and I didn't really talk about like the the actual reason on why this happened I don't I didn't quite understand it back then and it actually has to do with condemnation so just in case you're wondering this is about if you're struggling with condemnation it's not us a it's not us being able to save ourselves it's literally God's love that saves us it's God's love that transforms us um, you know I've been getting some feedback on one video I made about the vision where I saw where I had this like this, this uh, vision where Jesus said he didn't know me um, and this is the exact opposite so I just want to explain that to you guys sometimes I'm very hardcore sometimes I'm very graceful and merci merciful but anyways yeah so I had this vision and so I was getting ready to go to bed and I was praying in the spirit and when I was praying in the spirit I uh, you know I was kind of dozing off I actually started kind of being preachy in the spirit I was saying statements and I lost consciousness in the middle of this, but then I woke up back in consciousness, and I, w and I think it was me, you know, um, but there was this statement that I said, I don't remember what that statement was, but once I said that last concluding statement, I noticed that I was in this place that I had never been before. I was before this golden door that was really tall, like it, it had this shape to it. And I mean, it was so tall that like it was made for like other creatures to go into. It wasn't just made for humans. Like it was, I was small, you know, to this door. I don't know. I mean, I couldn't necessarily estimate the size. I guess maybe 30 feet, maybe 60 feet. I mean, something like it. But all I know is it was, I was comparably small for this door just being made for me. Um, and there were, there were these circular, like precious gems that were going down like this, like in a stripe pattern. So from your vantage point, when I was looking at this door, this side of this door opened. And as it opened, I started to like float to this door and I floated through you know, the opening. And as I was passing that door, I heard this loud shrieking sound go and it like, sh it, it uh, shook up everything around me. And like it shook up me and it was just a very breathtaking sound. As the sound ended, I noticed and started to focus on the throne of God that was before me. And I knew that God was far away. Like I was like before him, but I knew I had a long distance to be like right before him. He was really big. And I didn't see too many details like I saw an, like an outlining of like his hands arms whatever and maybe like his knees but like I didn't really see like anything else I didn't see his face I didn't see I, don't, I didn't even see his feet I remember not being able to even see his feet but like around him like what was making it hard to see as far as I saw like I said there weren't too many details I didn't see cherubim I didn't see angels I didn't see fire like a sapphire platform or any you know any of that I, I just saw this white light that was just consuming him all around him. It was the brightest, whitest light I had ever perceived. And I remember just, I, I mean, I, I, I have a taste of that memory. Like when I think about it, I just remember how bright and how white that light was around him. Like there were rays of this white light kind of shimmering off of him, you know, like raying off of him from him. And um, like I said, this, vi th this glance at God was only about three seconds. And I wasn't able to perceive like anything except his goodness. Like I wasn't able to get his his love, 
I wasn't able to get his judgment. I wasn't able to get really anything other than the fact that he had this presence around him of pure divine goodness. When I was taking in this goodness, it made this revelation to me about what real goodness is. And, you know, like on earth, we have such a twisted perception on what goodness is. We don't actually really understand what goodness is. We really can't fathom it unless we're in the presence of that. Um, and his goodness began to make me tremble as I was perceiving it more and more to the point where I woke up. And I was talking to, I was kind of asking God at the end, I asked him, did you really show me this? And I just started bawling my eyes out after about two minutes of not being able to respond. I just started bawling my eyes out. And I, I went off my bed, I went onto the floor and I was bowing my knees to the Lord. And when I was bowing my knees, um, I was just trying to repent more or I don't know what, I don't really remember what I was doing. I was just praising God. I was just thanking him for this. Um, this experience and then after a few minutes of doing that I asked God I said what was the reason for you to show me this I don't remember exactly what I asked but it was something along the lines of that like why did you show me this what made you choose for me to see this something like that right um and I felt the Holy Spirit speak to me and say you are worthy and I was like I'm worthy and then I face planted the ground again and started bawling my eyes all the more as I just had this really breathtaking experience and understood something new that I had never understood about God and I don't think I'd ever be able to understand the reality of his goodness without experiencing this one thing as a matter of fact um, I don't I don't remember that exact feeling that his goodness gave me you know, that moment, I felt it. The next day, I was able to go back to it. But then after that, it started to dim down. I wasn't able to perceive the, that goodness that I felt before the throne of God. It's impossible for people on this world to be able to fathom it. So, that's a cool experience and all, you know, and I went and telling people afterwards and whatnot. And some people were like, oh, cool. And other people were like, whatever. But what I missed out was I think the whole point in me seeing this vision, and this is what's so important, is that I saw this vision not because I was good enough, not because I was living the most righteous. As a matter of fact, I believe that I had this vision this night and at this time because right before I was praying, I just looked at pornography and I was really condemned about stumbling into sin and I was struggling and so I started praying to God and feeling like I'm not good enough and feeling like I'm not perfect enough and I hope I'm gonna make it. I don't know if I'm ever gonna get out of sin. And it was after looking at pornography that I saw this throne of God and the Holy Spirit at the end told me that I am worthy. And so I just wanna acknowledge that's the entire point. Uh, so many Christians struggle with condemnation and it's actually normal for people to question where they're actually at with their walk with Jesus when they're you know going through these kinds of things but at the end of the day you know and i've said this but i'm going to say it again it's his loving kindness that leads us to repentance you know his loving kindness is going to lead you to repentance it is supposed to you know it's not something to abuse or make excuses for still living a worldly way but at the end of the time that process only comes from him and what he does in you and the only thing we can do is surrender surrendering doesn't mean being able to with yourself and your own strength be able to turn from your ways. As a matter of fact, it's still struggling with what you're struggling with and just knowing that God loves you. I believe that's a huge part in actually getting closer to God and getting breakthroughs in sin. It's just knowing, you know, God, I know you love me even though I have this addiction, even though I'm struggling with this thing. And so that's exactly where I'm at in my life right now, about three years later. You know, I, I go back and forth. You know, like I said, I do believe there's a time for fear and trembling. I believe there's a time for conviction. Spirit, so hallelujah. So, you know, Jesus came to set us free. And like what sets us free is his love. And there's no way around it. There's nothing else that actually can set you free. There's nothing that can make you better other than his love and just trusting and having faith in his love. He is faithful. If you have faith, he'll prove his faithfulness to you. You know, so there's all these burdens and all these wounds in my heart, right? And I've been seeking a lot of healing. I believe that there's a, a part of deliverance is actually forgiveness and, and confessing things, right? So 
I'm just uh, I'm seeking healing in my life right now, you know, to help. But at the end of the day, it's supposed to lead me closer to Jesus. So in conclusion, this video is for people that are condemning. I need you to know that God does love you, that he does have a way out and it's not by your own strength it's by him being faithful it's by him making the promise he did on the cross i want you to know like i'm walking out my sin and i'm not doing it in condemnation i'm doing it in knowing that god does love me are there some steps that i'll probably be, be that i'll probably be called to take yeah but i know that it's something that god will make me ready for and it's something that he will choose for me so yeah that's really all i have to say is yeah, we're not supposed to condemn ourselves. We're not supposed to ever feel that way. No matter how deep we are in sin, we aren't supposed to feel like we're going to hell. That is an attack from the enemy. God loves us so much more than the power of this world or the power of the devil. He gives us ways out and we learn to be obedient to him and he heals us and it's his work that he does in us. So if you're seeking a way out of your sin, if you're scared, I just pray right now in the name of Jesus that that condemnation has to leave you right now in the name of Jesus. It has to go right now in Jesus' name, so I command it, go right now in Jesus' name. On top of that, I know this is hard to embrace because there are so many things in Christianity condemning people, and it's why so many people hate Jesus. They think It's because they think God hates them, is out there to condemn them, but God isn't. So my point is, know that God does love you through everything you're going through, through every right and wrong choice you're making. No matter where you're at, no matter who you're with, no matter what choices you're making, God loves you. And it's His loving kindness that leads us to repentance. And it's by His love alone and what He did on the cross that does save us. Um, I just want to clarify that for, you know, my last video. And that's the message I have to say is that even though I was struggling with sin, even though I am addicted to pornography, in the middle of this, in the deepest um, that I have had, had to embrace this God embraced me and God took me up before him in a very intense place of his presence so that I could witness and have him tell me that I was worthy I think that's really all I have to say Jesus loves you guys Jesus loves me Jesus wants to take us through this life it's in his process so yeah